Ah, I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Um, I know usually when I start these streams, you'd be used to seeing um, me on the camera. But today, <clears throat> a slightly different kind of day today. So this is the subject. I've, um, I've just put a, a picture a photo of it on uh, on Facebook. So if you follow me there, you'll um, you'll be able to see the photo. Uh, but today is really really dark, very overcast and raining. I've cranked the um, the gain on the cameras as high as it, they can go, but I think it's still going to be a little bit dark. But I thought, well, you know what? I'll pop on in the stream anyway because it's not too dark to paint. Human eye it seems can adjust to vari variations in light more than. Um, Hi Daphne and hi Ginny. More than uh, more than cameras can. But I want I want to show you something just quickly about the setup. I was talking about this to someone uh, the other day on Facebook about how this stuff is not very often shown. Now this camera is actually live. So this is the camera that I usually have on me. And today I've got it on the subject because I wanted to show you how I light these subjects. So the window obviously is this side. Let me just make sure that we can see all this. Sorry, I'm just checking. Um... Okay, so the window is this side, F fairly large window. And let me take this out of the way. This is just a strip of foam board, black foam board. This here is just a piece of MDF that I painted roughly different values, a slightly darker and a slightly lighter one on both sides. This is just a wooden box. This happens to be sitting on my still life stand. And the still life stand is actually a speaker stand they're brilliant and way way cheaper so the board is there I can put different boards there depending on how I want to light this but that only gets me so far because what I really want is to be able to show this in the best light for painting so if I place this across here I can cast a shadow over the background which gives me this kind of luminous just off neutral background and depending on where I place this if I make it shorter, then I can get it so that the shadow side of the peony is slightly darker than the background. So I can see the form that way. And this, obviously, the light side is going to stand out against here. But if I cast this shadow right across, then the shadow side of the peony becomes slightly lighter than the background. So, the, the, you know, there are just different ways you can light things to bring out the form. And I spend a lot of time on this stage. And the, the peony in this little bottle is forward of the shadow, so it has full light falling on it <clears throat> from the window. If I moved it back, you know, you can get a kind of a bit more of a mystery to it, but it doesn't stand out so well. So here it stands out really clearly. You know? So I wanted to show you that. So let me bring up... Um, let me bring up the... Um, this is the reference photo, which is a little bit closer because I'm going to be painting. I'm not going to be painting the bottle. I'm going to be painting it very close. Because it's overcast, I'm, I'm not as limited by time as I often am. Palette is here. I haven't got my colours out yet. I spent actually spent a lot of time today deciding whether to paint another rose or whether to paint this peony. <laughs> and spent probably more time than I should have changing from one to the other. Um, let's go to the camera on the panel. So this is the camera that I've cranked right up, especially this one. So this is just a, a seven by five panel and I want the peony to take up most of the space. So I'm actually going to be painting it. Oh, this is a study that I did the other week. Value study of a rose. So I'm going to be painting this like slightly larger than the size it actually is. This chip is just there to help me focus the camera. 
because it's hard to focus the the camera properly otherwise if you've got nothing there and um, hopefully you can all see me and hear me okay um i'm still to be honest with you hi georgia Good. yeah the last session was a value study um Hi, Christy. Hi, Linda. Um, please do say hi in the chat if you're there. Um, it's always nice to know if someone is there and watching and let me know um, where you're watching from. <clears throat> uh, I'm still, I'm trying to decide at this point whether I'm going to do a value study of this peony or whether I'm going to do a colour study and I'm leaning strongly because I've, I've decided to do a series of value studies, actually of roses. But I'm leaning strongly towards painting this in full colour today, which means the next stage that I need to do is also something that you would rarely see. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you. I'd have thought, hello, you must be getting bored of watching me paint by now. Three times this week, right? <laughs> Um, you can probably hear my biggest boys practicing his violin in the background there. Lockdown life. Um, it is extremely subtle. Right, Heather. And, and one of the things that I want to do is figure out the hues that I would that I would want for this. Let me. I, I know roughly where I want to be in the hue range, so I can put some paint out. Let's get some paint out to start with. There's the standards that I always use. <clears throat> I tend to put out tube paints depending on the subject. I don't think I've ever done a painting that didn't have, certainly never done one that didn't have white in it. And it's usually titanium white that I start with and maybe bring in lead white towards the end for its handling properties. And you all wipe your tubes, right, when you put some paint out. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Ivory black. Paint crime. Never paint with black, I say. Obviously, I don't agree. Um, ivory, black that is. And this is raw umber. It's interesting because when I was painting the other day, I was doing a um, value study Tuesday, I think. Was it a value study of, um, of a white rose? And they're actually yellow, you know. And because I had a picture of the actual rose up on the stream, you could see the difference. And even though the chroma in the rose was very low, it was quite a marked difference. I'm putting that out because there's some green there. This is Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake, PY3. Diarylide yellow, it's very green yellow. Not sure if I'm going to need this, but I'm going to put a little bit out anyway. Cad yellow, so I've got in my yellows, I've got a more orange and a more green yellow. Pretty sure um, that the shadow side is kind of a green, more of a green yellow than I might assume. Michael Harden, green gold. I think I'm going to put out more colours as I think I'm going to need them for the mix because the next thing I want to do, I know I'm going to need this <clears throat> because there are some little, this is an aquadone rose because there are some little flecks of blue red in the peony, one in the light and a few in the shadow. They do go in, they wouldn't go in right until the end.
I'm very well, thank you, Giovanni. Thanks for asking. You know, that's probably going to be. Um, I've lowered down the range, a value range, some chroma on. Right, one yellow, okay. I'm not going to put it out yet. Some chroma more on the orange red side. Lower down. Where's the tube I want? Put a little bit of this out. Quinacridone gold brown. So these are obviously all of these apart from the black and the white and possibly the raw umber are higher chroma than I'm going to want. So I'm going to want to be dropping chroma. So when I'm looking at this, the first thing I want to know really is shadow color the shadow side of the peony is the bit that interests me the most and the local color of the peony it is a beautiful composition isn't it but it's very it's very simple another thing i was talking about someone to uh, blurter i don't know if you're here blurter but there's someone in the arctic arm group blurter and um, just joined and posted a couple of flower paintings recently and those compositions really reminded me of Chinese Gongbi painting. It's that kind of very careful traditional line painting of flowers, you know, really beautiful. And the... Um, the compositions are very distinctive. And although this is a very simple composition, it's partly inspired by that. David, nice to see you. So, I'm going to go back onto, actually I'll go back onto the main camera and I'll take the palette off because I get to show you something here if the exposure is all right. Actually, the exposure's gone up a bit. You see how the lights are blown out on the side of the peony? I'm going to bring it down just to try and see, so you can try and see a little bit more. There's a lot of detail on the light side of the peony that you can't really see. So this that I have here is, um, this is a page from, try and get it with the light on it. It's so difficult to do these things in reverse. These are all chroma one. These are, these are all different hues. So this is all one hue, this is all one hue, this is all one hue different values obviously, but they're all chroma one, very low chroma. And I think that one is actually in the wrong place, I'm pretty sure. No, it's not. I've probably just got paint on it. Pretty sure. See, this is, you can see these, these are more reddish, tending towards more yellow and out towards green that way. It's this, it's it's very close to this one, which is actually, it's 10Y, which if you looked at it where it had chroma, you would say it was a green. <clears throat> I can show you it. Maybe a little bit further back towards orange. So this is like, this is the 10Y page out of the Munsell book. They appear fairly green, right? This, so this is like chroma one. Maybe it's a little too green. We'll try going back a page. So this is like one page further back. So this is going back around the hue wheel towards orange again. Hard to judge because the chroma is higher, but I think it's difficult sometimes. 
It's the, nature is so subtle, even with all of these 1,600 chips or whatever it is, quite often you still can't, you still want something in between. And I actually think it is between these two, so I'm going to keep both of those out for the local. Now, because I'm going to be about, I mean, uh, let's say it's in general terms, it's a greenish yellow, the local color. So generally speaking, even with low, very low chroma colors like this, especially when they're very high value, when they go into the shadow, the chroma will be very slightly higher than the light and um, the hue will move slightly. So for yellows I find that generally they move very slightly towards orange. So I would want like um, now this obviously you can't hold a, a chip against it. Get it right because that means that you'd be turning the chip away from the light and obviously, you know, it's light and shadow. So that's always going to look darker. But I want to get a rough idea. And the way I tend to do that is by holding a chip up in front of it like this. Unfortunately, I can't zoom the camera in any further than this. If, the, if I get it so, I mean, this is like, this is the angle of my panel, you know. It's actually a little lighter. And the chroma is very low still, it's like a chroma too, and that's, I'd say that's quite close. If I went up on chip, you can see the difference, like this is a way more chromatic. This is like a chroma 4 probably going to be a little bit too chromatic. So for something that has, um, actually it's not, it's not far off. I think that the chroma is going to be too high at four. Probably about right at chroma two. And the, the colours are difficult to judge down there, but I think it's probably right. That it's, it's low chrome, it's probably about... It's going to be somewhere in the range of these colours. And the way I work with value these days is that I... Um, I don't try to match exactly the values I see, because apart from anything else, for this subject I've got like a very, very light local that needs a little bit of chroma in it. And I've got a very, very dark value there as well. So the range from there to there, this dark value in shadow up to there is probably wider than I can reach with paint. I'll show you a little handy little thing that you can do to check that. find my little value. So here's a really simplified value scale. Just a middle value, a very a, a light white, titanium white and ivory black. Now this is a bit old, so the white is not all that light, but you can see if this is the angle of my panel, okay, and I hold that at the same angle to the panel, if I put titanium white on, it's not going to be anywhere near as light as that. But that leaf is quite close in value, possibly even slightly darker than the black. So if I, if I turn this away, look at the difference in the, in the value there. Turn the panel towards the light. And if I turn it far enough so that I'm close to matching the light, I end up with some reflection. But I need to be around there. And there's some... There's a little bit of reflection on it, but you can see that the 
the black there turns so far towards the light is a much lighter value than the darkest dark. This is the range of paint. Pretty much so. The range of values in the subject is wider than the range of paint. Which means I'm going to need to compress a little bit. Does that make sense? Judy, yes, I am feeling much better, thank you. Switch the canvas back over. Move the palette again. So you can see here, you know, the lights, I think the actual local is somewhere between these two. Very low chroma. This one is more green and this one is slightly more yellow. Oh, the light's coming up a bit actually. This one is, that camera on the palette is blown out. I'll, I'll bring down the exposure a little bit. Blowing out the lights. I wish cameras worked like human eyes. I'm self-adjusted. It would make my life so much easier. But I hate having auto exposure on because um, it's just really distracting and it tends to overcompensate. And I tried doing a few streams of auto exposure and it doesn't seem to work. Bring it back up a little bit. Okay, so I think the local is somewhere between these two. This is a higher chroma version of that color and this is a slightly higher chroma version of that color, but they're the same value. Might help me to mix it. And the shadows, I haven't decided in terms of the value of the shadow side whether I'm going to be like around here, which is the middle of the range. I think that's a value 5. Which you would say is just halfway down. That's a 6, sorry. Yeah, this is a 5. This is halfway down the value range. Maybe even a little bit lower, I haven't decided. And these are higher chroma versions of both of those. So they're slightly more orange than that, slightly greenish yellows. So, um, I mean, you can approach things like this with um, very particular ideas of how you're going to, where you're going to put those colors, or you can, you know, at the other end of the extreme, you can just do the whole thing just by trial and error. I think it probably takes you longer to learn to paint that way. And it depends on how, how you, you know, how you want to approach painting. If you want to, if you, if you like um, the look of the way um, that I approach painting, this is just to show you how I approach the color, you know. And it, it's evolving. I've been, for a while I, uh, I worked for a long time with uh, cubes and spheres and was very concerned with matching them as as closely as I possibly could and it's you learn a huge amount about color that way. I think it's probably the best way to learn color because you learn um, you have to be a lot you you learn sensitivity basically and uh, it, it stretches your sensitivity anyway. It takes time to develop. Should we have some background music on? It's usually a bit on a little bit. Quiet. Not sure if it's working today actually. Might not be working today. I'm working really slowly today. I'm just in one of those Zen moods. <laughs> Let's see if we can mix these two. So because they're going to be very difficult to judge, like these hues, I'm probably going to mix a higher chroma one and then drop the chroma slightly. So I know this is a green yellow, you know. So this is a green yellow. 
This also has a green yellow, green gold. Drop the value slightly, but that is what I want. Tiniest a touch, even of those two, they're high chroma, so it might end up overshooting. It's slightly lighter, which is fine. Even that is a little bit too green. Pretty close. So that's a, a green, that's a green yellow. And if I wanted to drop the chroma a little bit of that down to where it actually is, you know, I think it's the actual peony is lower chroma than that in the light. Then um, a neutral would probably get me there. And in this case, like the, this is raw umber, which is a yellow uh, orange. And this is ivory black, which is a blue. So it should end up, you know, will end up like it would be a neutral, but it would be slightly, very slightly tending towards green. It wouldn't be too dark. I want it to be the same value. This, I don't know how this is going to go, because this, you know, this flower is so subtle. That's a lower value. What I could really do with is a whole range of, of of values. When I was doing the um, the roses in values the other day, I did find that um, you know having like basically a full range of values mixed up and ready to go made it much much easier to paint. And I was popping up and down the value scale as I was painting, sometimes rubbing out and sometimes mixing. So mixing between these two, if that value is okay, yeah, it's good. Will get me drop the chroma from this one closer to that one. And the more yellow one is still kind of greenish, but I'm going to put in a little bit more cad yellow because it's more slightly more orange. And put in a little bit of the green gold. Uh, but I'm going to put in a little bit of raw umber as well, because it will drop the chroma, but it also will push it slightly towards orange. It's way too chromatic. I really want to just to be able to swing this hue very slightly too light. That's okay though, the hue is about right. Slightly more yellow and a slightly more green version. I can use that to drop the chroma of that one as well. Because the chroma is so low, you know, it shouldn't swing the hue much. And um, the shadow side, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix these two chroma two colors at these values. Now they're slightly greenish yellow, so I'm gonna go. Gonna need more white. This must seem excruciatingly slow to some people, I suppose, but this is, you know, if I know I've got something that's going to be challenging for me, like something like a really low chroma like this, it's 
challenging from the point of view of, of the chroma, which makes the hue more difficult because it's so low chroma, but also it's challenging because um, the values are so subtle. So that's about the right chroma. I'm going to bring the value down just a touch, but it's more, it's too orange because this is a yellow orange. So if I wanted to swing it towards green, I want something of about the same chroma and uh, same value, but a little bit more green. This looks like a likely candidate, green gold. It's going to have a lot more chroma. When it gets, to, oh, I always do that. I always put too much white in with this. I don't always do that. Put a little bit of white in and it just shoots up the value scale. It's way too chromatic as well. I'll bring it down with black. It'll end up with like a bluey green. Lower chroma. All I want is like a greenish version of this with the same value, then I can just swing it a little bit. Swing the hue a little bit. Value's good, and it's more green, and the chroma is about right. So I'll bring a little bit of this one into it. And just swing the hue a little bit towards green. I'm going to go a bit more green. You can, you have very fine control of the colour this way. It may, I realise this may seem obsessive. One, there, someone left a comment a little while ago on one of my streams to say I took all the joy out of painting. Um, but for me, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. You must make your own decisions. But I find this process that to be able to have such fine kind of control over colour, to go so deep into this world of colour in such detail, I find that quite a joyful thing in itself. So I asked this person what they meant, and they declined to re respond. <laughs> but I think you know there is there is definitely a feeling that painting should come from the heart, and it should be expressive and wild, and you should go with your feelings and your emotions. And personally, I think it's a balance. I'm, for me, the way I look at painting, I'm looking for a balance. I want that. That mostly comes when I actually start painting, and it comes from the brush strokes. That's good. Um, and the and the values, how I affect the values once I'm actually painting, comes mostly from that for me. Uh, and if and if I'm very careful about the color first, I find personally because I want realistic color, you know, most of the time that I can be more expressive when I'm not worried about the colors being wrong. Let's actually, I'm going to go up the value scale more than one step. So this is a five, this is a six, so let's mix a seven at chroma two. And then I've got a bit more of a range, you know, because this is like a nine. So that would give me like five, seven and nine. It should be useful with neutrals as well. Values all right. Bring the value of this one up.
only, we only need a small amount of this to, to swing the hue because it's higher chrome. Actually, it's losing chroma as I add the white though, so we'll see. And it might seem, you know, unnecessary to some people to be so exacting about the colour, but I find it, it, it makes a real difference, you know. It's going to be, because these, these colours are so low chroma in the, in the actual flower, it's going to be very easy for me to overshoot using a bit too much on too green. I do have some pre-mixed neutrals that I might pull out as well while I'm painting this. I don't often use them these days, but what's wrong here? Too busy talking while I'm mixing and not thinking clearly. And completely forgetting about the comments, I'm sorry. Hello everybody who's just joined. Yeah, Alison, you've got some peonies to, do, to work on at the moment, haven't you? Unfortunately, mine is a pretty much a white one and yours are a pink. So they're going to be slightly different, aren't they? I think my peony's opening actually whilst I'm looking at it. Yeah, if the, if the feed freezes, just refresh the screen. It should work. Virginia says, would you turn that value sample paper to the light to match the mid value and look to know where the lights and darks would be. N no, mostly uh, deciding on the values, I decide that mostly from, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm undecided completely yet the value that I'm going to use for the shadow. Um, Actually, it wants to be more green, I think, but it needs more chroma. So I'm undecided about that yet. But if I've got a range that I know are in the right hue, roughly in the right chroma, then I, I shouldn't get into too much trouble with it. You know, I, I will adjust a little bit because value is, I, I, did, a, I did a little demo of it for my threads group yesterday. Um, Values aren't written in stone, and there's there's different ways to approach them. This is going to go too green, I think. I'll show you in a second a couple of studies that I painted yesterday. On a, this is like a private was a private stream for the Threads group. I'm struggling a bit here. It's too green. It's a little bit too green. But this mix with the raw umber is dropping too much chroma, so <clears throat> because I brought the raw umber quite a long way up the value scale, it's very low chroma by that point, and it's dropping. It is swinging the hue in the direction I want, but it's dropping too much chroma. This will be darker. So this is just a yellow orange. The yellow orange get it to the same value and then I could swing the hue back towards yellow orange without losing the chroma too light now Yeah. 
You could argue that it's it wouldn't make an awful lot of difference those those tiny changes to hue that I was making there, but I think you can see them. It depends how you're painting. If you're painting with a you know quite a, a tight control of color like this, then if something stands out, it's like if your values are really well observed. If you hit a false note in the values, they it it, sh it shouts out as being wrong. And it destroys the feeling of form a little bit. And I think the same thing happens with colour. If it's like all really close, then if there's one little note or an accent which is out in some way, the hue or something, you know, it tends to shout a bit and destroy the form a little bit. Not painting doesn't work so well. Probably, well, I will need more colours than this, but that, obviously I'm going to need the background as well. Um, background is an interesting one because it's fairly it's a fairly neutral background but it has a shadow cast onto it which makes it slightly a bit more luminous brings the chroma up a little bit but the actual color of the background isn't really that important as long as I you know the value makes sense very zen yeah <laughs> I suppose you could you could call it that zen painting and these, um, the value studies I've been doing of roses have felt very much like that, very zen. Let me show you something. So these two studies were painted last night. Uh, from the same, uh, from a reference photo because it was a paint along session. But they're two different approaches to value, same subject, you know. They have the same extremes, so the darkest darks and the lightest lights are the same in both. But you can see how the values are being compressed very differently. This one appears, it's more like impressionist value balance. It appears bathed in light with light shadows. So you could get much more chroma in the shadows, like at the lemon, say, here. But this is more like a Dutch golden age, still life value balance. Deep, smoky darks and a kind of more mystery and drama. And the, the lights actually appear higher value, they sing out more. So, um, I, I don't think that value is, is, is an absolute thing, uh, particularly because our value range that we have of paint is, is smaller than the value range of nature, so we have to compress. And different painters with different styles compress the values in different ways. And you can use that. If you can control it, then you can use it for you know, an aesthetic result for whatever you want. Um, let's get some oil on this panel. This is, um, what's this one? This is a Jackson's oil primed linen panel. Don't have enough oil out. Told you I wasn't very together today. This is just cold pressed linseed oil. Nice fat Cornelison's hog. If you want hog flats, you can't do any better than these. In my opinion, Cornelison is fantastic. So I'm just painting, I'm just covering it with linseed oil. And then I wanna I want to tone this panel. I want to really be thinking about what color the background is going to be. I'll find out what color it is first. I think I pretty much know I've got a good idea. I know it's way down the value scale and it's also pretty low chroma, but. Show you. Um, They open while you're painting. The peonies you're talking about, Alison, they do, don't they? They're horrendous, man. I mean, you basically, you've got to finish them in a day. <laughs> you know? Or, uh, or it gets really, it gets really a bit difficult. 
I love Tess. No, I'm probably going to be on for a little while today. Anyway, I'm just going to leave the cameras running because it's overcast. So I'm just working really slowly, you know. If I don't, um, I'm taking my time to try and make sure I don't mess this up. It's such a subtle subject. I really don't want to mess it up. So um, let me go. I was going to go back onto the main camera for a second. I oh, didn't mean to do that, sorry. Because, uh, you know, so the camera today is set up on the subject instead of set up on me. So if I want to kind of, I, I do this quite a lot to kind of get a general feel for what kind of colour I want in the background. So this is a, this is a Monzo chip here, you know. So that's like my panel. So if I, if I put, if I wanted to do that exact value, I would have to hold this at the same angle to the light. Um, and it's, it's interesting how much chroma you can have you know, in background sometimes. This is actually too, a bit too much. So if I, if I angle this chip so that it exactly matches the background, it's, it's, got, it's got a bit too much chroma. This is chroma 4. And I think it's too orange as well. So actually, the... Um, That's very close. The background is in the, in a similar color range to the peony, you know, which I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. But I'm obviously going to want it to go quite dark on the left hand side. Probably not right at the bottom of the range because I've got this green leaf, which means I'm missing at least one color that I'm going to need for that. But, so I'm going to say the background is probably going to be about here. You know, so it's, it's going to be close to, I don't want to push any of these, any of these chromas. I don't want to push them. Uh, um, you know, for this, it's like this very reserved kind of, the, the beauty of this subject is all in the values, I think. So, except the only high chroma areas are the green and, um, and those little flecks of pink. Hopefully you can see them. The flex. So um, I'm going to mix up a rough colour for the background. I'm not bothered about perfection for this because mostly this anyway is just going to be toned. So I just grabbed some raw umber, some green gold to shift it a little bit more towards green towards this and um, raw umber and black this is this is not going to be exactly what the background will end up being but it's in a similar range and the, the reason it, it doesn't need to be exactly what it's going to be is because uh, I'm going to wipe a lot of it off because this is mostly just to tone the panel I actually have come quite close to that but it's a bit more green So it's slightly more towards orange than the than the shadows of the um, than the shadow side of the peony. Forgot to have my lunch again. Apologies if my tummy is rumbling and it puts you off. Just cover the panel, you know. I like to do this roughly and then wipe a, a lot of it off, leave some randomness to the marks i really like to have some texture on there you know to work into so i'm not going in completely kind of with nothing obviously i'm going to want to go a lot darker when i've actually put the background in and i'm also going to want to bring the chroma down but that's somewhere like in the right range in terms of the hue <clears throat> about where I want it to be placed. It's going to be big.
Actually, it's probably going to end up about life size. Because the panel is quite small. Why didn't I eat? I always forget to eat. Bigger. Bit bigger. Bigger than that, actually, I think. Let's really fill this space a bit more. check the proportions that I'm not too far out. So the width from here to here is slightly bigger than the height from the very top to the very bottom, so I've got that wrong, so <clears throat> I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Just checking generally the width to the height. Because this distance from here to here is bigger than this distance from there to there. And I've still got this bigger, so it's going to have to come up. And some of these strokes, you know, hints of them might end up still in the painting at the end. It's it's wider. It's it's slightly wider than than it is high. Is it? Actually, it's almost the same. Very slightly, almost the same. Very slightly wider. That's probably all right. Main shadow block. Think about that in a minute. Not yet. and get the shape. You know, one of the nice things about working on a panel like this, in a, a very slick panel into an oil, uh, Layer, an oil couch is that it already starts to have there's already some really subtle values going on in here probably when I start painting 
values that I place will be less subtle and not as good. But it, it, it gives me, you know, it gives you uh, like a, a really nice starting point. Rather than just dealing with a blank. A blank panel. Actually, it works out quite nice because the leaf is going to sit about there. It should be a nice, fill the panel really nicely. So a little bit bigger than life size is going to end up now. Hello, Marnie. Hello, Elaine. Thanks for joining. So let's go in with the value. Let's just see, you know. background start to set up a value balance very general I would just think in really general terms to start with what am I doing I, I'm pretty sure I want the value to be around there And a very slight differentiation in hue between the background and the um, peony. That leaf there is going to be the darkest dark, and it's going to be um, darker than the background. So, you know, I'm, I'm mostly thinking about at this point, I'm trying to make marks that are going to work if I can, you know, but I'm, I'm thinking about the values. Let's put that leaf in roughly where it will be, because that's my lowest note of my scale. So I want... Um, rifling through my paint box. I should really be more organised. So I've got ivory black here and I've got diarylite yellow there, PY3, and with um, this thalo green, this is Windsor, Windsor and Newton, Windsor green, Windsor green they call it yellow shade. Running out of space, let's get a shot at these. Still don't know, you know, until the paint hits the panel. If I'm going to be kind of in the in the color area that I want, I think I will. And it's going to be mostly about just carefully controlling the the values and trying to do it in the same way that I've been doing the rose value studies. So if I get black, this is a really good way to make strong greens. I want a low, a very low value one this time, so I'm going to put in a bit of this Darylide yellow, and it will be low chroma and a bit too, probably a bit too yellow. I mean, I can't, I don't think I can quite get what I'm going to be looking for. 
actually that's probably about right now see just to show you i mean that's right down the bottom of the value scale if i wanted to add chroma to that i, I will inevitably if i put some of this down low green and i'll inevitably shift the hue towards blue green but it will give me more chroma and actually somewhere between them i think I'm thinking mostly about, I just want this value to be really low. Get a nice chiselly brush. This is, um, what's this, Da Vinci Synthetic Flat. Yeah, if you can see some semblance of a flower there at the moment, uh, it's, um, Anne was just saying, it's, it's just because of these subtle values just from the wiping out. You know, as I was saying before, what I'm probably going to do as soon as I start painting is, is lose the subtlety, so <laughs> I probably won't do as good job of the values as the wipeout does. Let's go up. It's a little bit that's slightly up the value range. Oh, that's... And if I'm lucky and this comes out all right and I don't want to change the value too much afterwards, I might not have to do any more on this leaf. Or very little. It's mostly, it's really useful in the painting because it's sh all the other values, you know, it, it, it supplies the, the bottom of the scale, the, the note at the bottom of the scale that all the other values will, will relate to. And the top of the scale obviously being the very lightest lights, which I'll put in in a moment. It's got this lovely little highlight on the edge there, but I'm not going to bother with that yet. Too much detail too soon. Just want shapes really at the moment and, and value, value notes more than anything. And also, I think a lot with with is trying to get the subtleties of the um, the shape, the contour as well, rather than uh, just kind of throwing it in. No. It's almost like it's feathery around here. There's a bit that I'm dying to get to, which is there's a bit of reflected light on the bottom of it there. It's bouncing up from underneath. <laughs> I can't wait to get there, but I've got to be patient and, uh, you know, it's only going to work if I set up everything else nicely. I'm going to drop the chroma a little bit and raise the value a little bit on the right hand side of the background, bringing a little bit of neutral. And here, just a little bit, because, uh, I mean, it is there anyway, but also it's going to really help to, um, I don't want to raise the value too much, actually. No, don't do that. Because... I've set this up so that the shadow side is very, very slightly higher value than the background. Um, but I do want, I 
want the, the chroma to be showing there. That kind of reflected light to stand out. Drawing mistakes, the leaf is too big. Does it matter? Did I do it so big? This comes up actually here in the wrong place too. Actually comes up here. So the shadow side, very slightly um, lighter than the background, so this is going to be too light, probably, but is it going to be right? No, it's not too light. So I'm looking at it against this very dark note of the leaf. This value here. I just want to paint a fairly simplified block. General shape. I think it's probably going to be, maybe we'll work out to be too light. Um, work into it with a, mix up a darker one and, make, and work into it a bit more. Let's get this in for now. And all, all of these brush strokes are from, like from this point on, because this is like, a, you know, it's a la prima painting, all of the Brush strokes are important from this point on. I don't want to put down anything, you know, which isn't going to look good, basically, <laughs> if I can avoid it. So I'm squinting down. That value is too light. I, li I like the hue and the chroma, but I maybe the chroma is a little bit low. But it's all right, but the value is too light, I think. So I'm going to make some space over here. So I tend to have 
my palette isn't really strictly organized, but I tend to have spaces on it for particular things. So, you know, flower and the values coming down, background leaf, and I try and keep them fairly separate. So there's like a, I can move the background actually. There's a, there's a, there's an organization to it, you know, although it's not like very strict. So that was, um, think the chroma comes up very slightly just in the very darkest parts where it feels like there's a bit more maybe a little And I think I don't want to go crazy with it. I think that would be too much. Out of a lot of these colors because if I don't get them right, oh, yeah, Ginny, sorry, I missed your question. Um, if I don't get them right, I don't want to have to be doing a lot of repainting, you know, because there's a kind of an uh, there's an immediacy to some of the marks, and I find if I spend too long repainting, I'll kind of I'll lose some of that, you know. I'll lose some of those, the kind of expression of the brush strokes. And Ginny says, those value studies you showed were beautiful. Thank you. Just one question, if I may. Did you change the lighting on the setup for the darker one? No, that's the whole point. They were actually both. They weren't painted from life. They were painted from photo. And the reason I did that is because it was a paint along. So I give everybody the reference photo, which obviously is, is a photo of one of my own setups that I've, I've put together, um, and a value scale actually on the photo. And then we mix a value scale, and then I show which values I'm choosing for which bit. So, and then people who are painting along, you know, can see exactly what I'm talking about and why I'm choosing which, you know, which value for which part of the painting. gonna I suspect what I want isn't that and it's not that it's somewhere in between the two in terms of the painting too light Just bring in just a little bit of that um, gold brown in to give it a bit of chroma. It will also push it more orange. What I want really is both of these because this is higher chroma and more towards orange, and this is in the same hue range as these, uh, and chroma just lower down the hue range. So actually, really, I, I want both. I 
and I want to go probably use a little bit of both and go between them. I'm confusing myself here. This is actually between them pretty much. The value is right. The chroma is between the two of them. Let's leave that one. So I don't want to put too much chroma in it. This one, it's just a subtlety I really want to get. What value is the shadow? Christy says, well, what I actually put up there was, um, I think it was uh, five. So this is value five, so it's about the middle of the range, and I'm I'm looking at dropping it just a little bit. If you're if you're looking at it in Munsell terms, I think I'm going to drop it just a little bit. Because I want it to be down where the background is, and I want those I want the lights to really kind of the light side to really sing out, you know. Um, and parts of the background go uh, go down as low value as the um, as the background does. Parts of the shadow side, sorry, of the of the peony. I mean, it's essentially, I suppose you could say, a monochrome study, but there's a lot of subtlety in the values as well. So that one is drops down a couple of values. Is that one five? Yeah. This is that um, value four. So gradually I'm kind of building up a little little string here. So these are the same hue and chroma. This one is higher chroma and going slightly more towards orange and slightly high, uh, lower value too. But these are roughly the same value. Well, they're very close this, to the, being the same value. Um, do you always create... A fresh batch from scratch to change the values. Yeah, yeah, I always mix up fresh paint. Always mix fresh paint. Um, sometimes if sometimes I do this with it though, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stick them in little cling film packets, you know, and if I know I'm going to be painting the same thing over two days or something like that. What brand of filbert bristle was that again? It's these Cornelison's hogs. They're really, really good. You know, you can work and work and work with them and they're great. Now, I do have some rosemary's brushes here that I've just started using and I like on Kathleen Spanzer's recommendation. These are synthetic eclipse comas. I like those. Um, I, I kind of like these ivory flats, but they, I kind of like them, but I'm not, I don't know, they're a bit, they're not quite what I'm looking for in a synthetic, I like them softer really. Um, this, but I, of the rosemary's brushes, I like those. I also use these, which is the rosemary's bot botanical set, which I like very much, synthetics. I think rosemary does really good synthetics. Not so good, rosemary's um, hog. Splayed on the first juice. I managed to keep it you know, reasonably together by putting, clipping kitchen roll over it with a, with a, when it dries with a, the clothes peg. I shouldn't have to do that, you know. Look at the difference between, let's find another one of these that I haven't got wet. 
bought these at about the same time. This is a Con Ellison Hog Flat. Been used about the same amount. Actually, this one much more. Because um, this one I only use if I want particular texture now because it's splayed so much. I actually splayed more than that on the first use. Um, but the synthetics I really like. And from what I found so far from these, like, these angled synthetics are really nice. This is Eclipse. Eclipse. These are lovely. This is a coma. Lovely. So, uh, you know, for Rosemary's, I like the synthetics. But there's also a lot of other synthetics that I like. I don't, it seems to me that synthetics are, are a little less complicated to make. But Cornelison, really, really good. And you spell it C O R N E L I S S E N. They have a shop in London. Let's try not to mess up the values now. I want to get, uh, I want, there's two areas really, there's, there's this, this two areas I need to get in, there's the light light, and then there's this area here. It's higher value and it's low chroma, and I think probably it's going to want to be, um, I'm going to want to stay in this range. I think that might be a little light. It's it really, I think this area, most of it belongs to the light. It's, it's in between. It's difficult to decide. I think most of it belongs to the light. Some of it definitely belongs to the shadow, though. That's going to be too light. That's going to be too dark. Somewhere between the two. You know, and this is only a step on the, in, on, in terms of the Monsell scale, it's only a step. It's too dark. I do this a lot. I, I, I zone in on a particular area and I look at the dark against the light instead of looking at it against the whole thing. And I go in too dark. Lose the subtlety of the values. It's like, really destroys the feeling of light. So I'm still painting like general shapes, like I don't want to get into detail too much yet. I'm going 
go up a little bit. So I'm squinting down a lot still. I really don't want to get into doing any details yet at this point. But the edges, I do uh, take a bit of care with. I mean, the, the shape, you know, the outside, the shape of the outside edge. There was an interesting point came up the other day on one of the streams about whether when you're softening an edge, whether you should pull the light into the dark or the dark into the light. And uh, <laughs> actually, I don't think there's a set way to do it because some people say one and some people say the other. I do both, <laughs> personally. That may be just because I'm not careful enough, but...
So on the light, the light side, let me get some of that. Probably did a bit more than I really wanted to on the shadow there. Um, So for the very lightest parts, I'm probably going to go up to titanium white. A very small amount of the lights in. So like, this would be a very light light here. Cut this area is a light. And the difficult bit in the lights is to be able to show the variation without um without letting any of the values go too dark. I'm terrible for that. So we've got the neutral, bring the chroma down. A big thanks to uh, Kathy Speranza for recommending these brushes because I really do like them. They, they seem like tailor-made for painting petals. These are the Eclipse, Rosemary's Eclipse. I generally, I've been a bit down on Rosemary's brushes lately. I was really disappointed with some of them, but um, these are nice. I think. Not that impressed with the ivory flats, but I do like these. I guess a lot of it depends on what you're doing with them, what you want them for. A bit more chroma down here. Down the value range a little bit. Yeah, Mariana, yeah, the garlic exercise. Oh, funny you should say that because actually the values are really similar. Yeah, the values are really similar. A note to remind myself that I've got some right here. So this light here. Shadow behind it. Mm. 
And it is, if you're, I, I found anyway, if you're trying to paint something really, really subtle like this and not mess it up, it really helps to have the values carefully laid out like this so you know where you are in the range. It really helps. I'm just very wary of going too low in these values here when I'm working into the lights. It's so easy to do. Lose all of the, the subtlety. Oh, I meant to say earlier on, by the way, the, the, maybe I did and I've forgotten that I've already said it, but the photo, I, I'm not uh, brilliant with cameras and um, I'm not experienced enough, I don't know enough about them. And unfortunately, the light on the photo, the light side of the P and E is a bit blown out and there's more detail there that you can't actually see on the photo, which is a shame. Um, but it's just my ineptitude with cameras, basically. It's going quite a bit more yellow here. That's interesting. Um, and it's, it's a low change of the local colour. There's a bit of chroma there. And more, and... Uh, goes a bit more towards orange-yellow. That's way too much. Okay, that's not going to be useful. That's what area of the value range is. It's around here. Actually, there's probably enough left just on the brush to do it. It's not strong, but it is there. It's difficult with these things because sometimes the longer you look at something, the the less you see the relationships to the whole and the more you see just that little area and it's it really is the relationships to the whole that matter or even more but what it is a subtle change though but it is definitely there a bit more chroma and it goes a bit more towards orange yellow it's By the time it gets uh, up here, it, it's not there anymore.
think I've got like I ended up with a few false notes in this bit up here where it got a bit too the values went too dark. Weren't, weren't quite working as I wanted them to. I'm going backwards and forwards on the shadow, taking it down and bringing it up again, and still not quite decided. Just kind of looking for the overall, the, oops, the kind of the balance that's going to work. I'm not, not sure that I've quite found it yet. I mean, it's, it's really small changes that I'm making, but I find that, you know, sometimes it's those really, really small changes that make the difference. The light is starting to go now. I'll see if I can bring up the exposure on the cameras a bit, but they're already very high. The light has been quite kind so far today, considering it's such a gloomy day, but it is going now. I've really got the cameras, the camera boosted right up beyond what it, it really <laughs> likes to do. Um, got some drawing problems, maybe. Am I bothered about them? <clears throat> maybe. Oh, the screen is really dark now. Sorry about this. I can't really bring them up any more than that. The camera is now. They're um, they're gonna they're gonna st struggle. The light is really start. It's actually starting to go in the studio too. I'm struggling a bit really to see the values clearly now. I think I'm gonna have to, as much as I want to keep going, I'm gonna have to think seriously about stopping now. I have a feeling, say I brought the value of the shadow side down and then now I'm bringing it slowly back up again. It's partly because the light is changing and then things start to look very very different I think on the on the panel. It seems like the the contrast I suppose you would call it gets becomes more obvious. I'm getting to the point now where I don't really have enough light. It's a pain. Which is a real shame. Because I'm enjoying this one and I wanted to see, I wanted to try and get it done in one go while the... Um, While the oil is still fresh on the panel, 
Let's try just bringing that out with a slightly lower value there. Oh, sorry, I completely forgot to keep up with the comments. Getting <laughs> wrapped up in this. Um, Kerry says, what are the colours you used for the dark side? Well, I, I, um, by colours, I suspect you probably mean what tube paints I mixed. And um, I can tell you what the component colours are. The tube paints that I mixed to get those colours, it was raw umber and white, uh, mostly with a little bit of Michael Harding green gold. And a little ivory black to bring the chroma down because the chroma was a little bit too high, I think. Although now I'm not so sure. There's something very subtle going on in there that I want to bring in in the chroma. But um, they're actually low chroma. The best way to 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 describe it is is low chroma green yellows. They are. In there, and I'm just kind of um, modulating them a little bit as I go. But trying to be very careful to keep a clear separation between the light side and the shadow uh, because it's very easy to lose. When you get wrapped up in a particular area, you know, painting the petals or something, and you, um, I do anyway, I, I, I just look at that area, focus in on that area and forget to keep looking back at the hole and see how the, the section that I'm painting relates to the hole. And that's how you start losing. Like all these values in, in the shadow here are very, very close. You know, I'm trying to get like small variations in. I'm trying to bring in some of this reflected light in there where there's a little bit more chroma. Um, but the value differences are small, you know. This has been bothering me for a while, this area here, I think it's Mostly just that the value is not too low. This area needs the most work probably at the moment. And this transition isn't soft enough around there. Little areas of it kind of need down. Um, Modeling a bit more. I, I mean, the changes that I'm making now, where I'm I'm kind of just doing small changes in the in the background. Really, they're quite they're quite subtle, you know. The big problem I find with flowers for me is being able to paint with enough subtlety to, to not to lose them. That's, um, I have a little brush that I like to use for softening very small areas, this one here. because that is a gentle curve there. And on this side, this is a gentle curve away from. And 
I think it's still, I think my, um, I think my value is too low here. It just doesn't quite have the subtlety. Oh, it's so dark now. <laughs> I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to have to stop. It's too dark. Um, here, my value. Okay, oh, it's so hard to stop that one. I can see things I want to change. In here, I think I've I've gradually let my value go too low in relationship to this. I've let this all of this value there go too low. So I've got to bring it up a little bit, back up a little bit. This is one of those areas, like I was saying, because I'm because the range of paint is smaller than the range of values in the subject. You tend to you look at a particular area, like I, you know, I can get exactly this change here when I look at the flower, but I can't do exactly that change because I, everything has to relate back to here and to here, you know. And I've just let the value go a little bit too low there, I think. And some of this is working nicely and some of it, I think, I'm glad I've got a good photo of this because I don't know what state this peony is going to be in tomorrow. But um, probably it will have opened. <laughs> I'm starting to get a nice impression of light around here. That's starting to come. It's, the, it's all in the values. It really is in the values. I mean, everything else is really important too, but... There's so little chroma anyway in this flower. It's really the values that have to show the light. And I was surprised myself by a couple of just neutral studies of roses I've done lately that you really can bring in a, a lot of a feeling of light and reflected light just with values. You don't need chroma to do it. I think we're starting to get, maybe starting to get somewhere now. Just as the light's finally giving up on me. One thing I can't resist doing just a little of, though, is the little flex of uh, I just want to see you really, I shouldn't do this because I'm not, I'm not convinced that I've completely nailed the values where I want them, but I think I'm close, you know. Little flex of blue red that kind of they're very subtle, but they kind of make it in a way. And then in the shadow, they're very dark, so and they're a lot darker. So I need a shadow version of this. So I'm going to go quinacridone rose, and I'm going to bring in some of this. Um, I need a low value, but I still want chroma. Bring in some of this gold brown. So they need to really stand out against the overall value and should actually help it to, it's going to be too dark, help it to, uh, to read better. There's a little bit coming up. There's quite a big one down here.
had a feeling they were going to work nicely, but I, <laughs> I knew I had to get a bit further through and with the value. I think the values are going to work. I think they're, they're getting there now. Just the overall, you know, the shadow and the light, I think they're getting there. I'm ha feeling happier about it now. I just want to do um, on this leaf. There's a very sharp highlight just on the end here, which shows light and also shows the form where it is there. Um, and there's, a, there's a, a slight highlight around the edge. Just, uh, like a really sharp flat is good for that. That's not so obvious though, so I'm gonna knock that one back a little bit. Yeah, when Noah's little flex went on, it helped the shadow side to read better, I think, maybe. Um, yeah. This has been a very tricky flower to paint. But beautiful, you know. There's more still to do. Get a bit more chroma into the light of the stem there with this yellow really show that light there now it's like every little bit of, of a painting affects how something else reads you know you have to be um, careful of everything starting to come. I'm tempted to bring the background value down a little bit in places, bring the chroma up slightly. This has been, a, how long have I been on? Two and a half hours. This has been a long stream. <laughs> you know what, I'm, I need to stop and have a bit of a break anyway. I've gone quite a long way with this, very, very slowly. Um, I had no idea I'd been painting for this long, but it is probably going to be a good idea to have a break. I think it it's needs, uh, the bit that I'm really looking forward to doing is in here, but I didn't want to start doing any detail in there until I was happy that I had the light and the shadow working. I am going to drop the I'm going to change the background a little bit. I'm going to drop the value a little bit on this side and I'm going to shift it a little bit towards orange. Um, uh, and give it a little bit more chroma. So hopefully without completely screwing up the whole painting, you know. That would not be good. Not not purple. I just feel I'm trying to find a I'm not, I'm not looking actually at what the background is, to be honest here. I'm just, I'm trying to find something. I wonder actually, a bit more chroma down there, right at the bottom of the value range of burnt umber, which is much more of a red orange. 
and has more chroma. I don't often use it these days actually, but just for that background, I just want to try this and see, because otherwise I might forget, you know, <laughs> that I plan to do it. Um, just to see how it would work. It may be partly just because the colour harmony has changed a little bit since I brought in the red. Actually, the lights come up again a little bit now. I'll try that, Christy. I'll try putting it in the fridge. The other leaf. Um, Maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have a think about that. I think I like this with a little bit more chroma. I think I like that change. I think this is my longest ever. Live stream. I think I like this change. Just a bit more chroma. And a slight hue shift towards orange in the shadow. It's not, um, as I say, it's not really there, maybe it is a little bit, it's a, but this is just because I think it will, um, just to help the painting a little bit, to have just a little bit more. You never know, never know where these things are going to go. And I, I think possibly I like I like this because it's giving more of a difference between the background and, and this and, and showing you know having a little bit more chroma here is emphasizing like the subtlety of the chroma there, maybe that's you know I like it just uh just felt like it. I think this one is going to be worth really trying to to bring out as well as I can. I, I don't think it will need an awful lot more work. Um, mostly this area around here I want to resolve. I'm happy with overall where I think where things are kind of sitting in the overall balance now. I love those little red flecks. I think I might need to work around them a little bit because they happen on the, the edge of petals. So some r subtle value work in here is going to show a little bit more. It's going to help them to work a little bit more, I think. Work better, I mean. Um, I'm really uh, quite happy. So this is one is fun. Just felt that was detracting a bit too much. 
texture. Yeah, there's more to do for sure. Um, I may put that other leaf in. I may put it in. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. And uh, I'm probably going to change my mind again about the background and bring the chroma down a little bit in places. But overall, I think that it seemed to bring out this area quite nicely. So um, yeah, the, the light is coming. I'm going to stop now and have a cup of tea. I really need to have a bit of a break. My back is killing me. Um, and I don't often paint for two and a half hours at, at once without a break. It just, I was just enjoying this one so much. I'm, I'm happy, I think I was pretty much right with the hue of the shadow area. Um, it could have gone more, uh, maybe a little bit more orange, but it looks a lot closer to what I'm seeing in front of me. Um, generally speaking, pretty happy. Yeah, this, this is my favorite bit. <laughs> right here but i think when i work in here th this might be my favorite bit i just want to bring in a little bit of structure up there keep the values close and bring in a bit of structure and that will help i think as well yeah i did david jack have you finished your violin big fella yeah how'd it go all right good you okay i'm just finishing my stream oh i know what you're after you want to steal my laptop don't you? i know i don't want to steal it <laughs> Actually, I do want to see that. Oh, yeah, I really can't. All right, thanks very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, oh. And I will see you again next week. Have a brilliant weekend. Um, I'll probably maybe work a little bit more on this tomorrow, or maybe a little bit more today, and I'll, I'll stick it up on Facebook and stuff when it's done. <laughs>